grace and mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, words do not describe the fact that you gave to us your Son to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and give to us your life, your mercy, your peace, so that we may be your people in this world. Father, guide us and strengthen us in the reality that Jesus is your Son. He is our brother. And lead us to live our lives with you, with him, and with the Holy Spirit. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus, and all God's children say, Amen. Amen. I want to start out today by asking you a very simple question. Simple question that probably you'll be thinking to yourself after I ask it is, Pastor, why are you asking this question? Well, simply put, the question is, who is Jesus? Now, it's a simple question, right? Who is Jesus? To which a response we probably get, um, yeah, not, not going to work. Not that kind of an answer. So, let's look to God's Word. Let's go to God's Word in our Gospel lesson, which was read just a few moments ago, when, when we hear about the Word of God. Because what I want to focus on are two things. First thing is, who is Jesus? He is the Word. He is the eternal Word. He is the Word that was always has been, always is, and always will be. Jesus is the Word, the Son of God, the Father. Jesus is the Word, the eternal Word through whom all was created. Everything that was created had its essence, had an entity, and the Father created it, and Jesus who created alongside with Him, along with the power of the Holy Spirit. Who is Jesus? He is the Word who lives among us. He, who is Jesus? He is the light. He is our salvation. He is our life. Who is Jesus? He is the one who brings God the Father to us. Who is Jesus? That's the second point. He is our flesh and blood. And the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, John writes. Of course John is going to see His glory. He was there with Jesus for three plus years. He walked with Jesus. He learned from Jesus. He grew as a result of Jesus. His glory, who John saw, who we continue to see. He is the one and only Son, full of grace and truth. Who is Jesus? He is the one who became flesh, who died upon the cross, gave up his body, shed his blood, so that you and I would have forgiveness of sins. That you and I would have life and light. By the way, the forgiveness of sins in his body and blood are here on the altar today, in and with the bread and wine. The forgiveness of sins that God has given to us. Jesus is that flesh and blood. He is our life, He is our light, He is our salvation, He is our body, He is our blood, He is our flesh and bones, He is our brother. So I have another related question to ask you then. Why do we still sit in darkness? Why do we still sit in darkness? After all, Jesus, when we believe in Jesus, when we believe in what He's done, we live in the light of Christ and the life that is of Christ. So why do when the, when the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ shines upon us, we go, ooh, ow, oh, not quite so bright? Because it shows everything. All of our sins, all of our sinfulness, all the things that we've said, all the things that we've done, all the things that we've thought, it shows it all. And yes, we go, ow, that's bright. And we recoil from the light. We pull back from the light. The light that is designed to give us life and grace 
and mercy, the light that we say. And we use the, the excuse, well, I'm a sinful being. That's, what it, that's what's going to happen. I'm a sinner. Always will be, always have been. So, not an excuse. It's not a reason to coil back. Because the life and the light of Jesus Christ is stronger than our sin. The life and the light of Jesus Christ is more powerful than any sin that we can do. So, you know, in other words, instead of focusing on, oh, I'm a sinner, let's focus on the reality that I also am a saint. A one who lives in the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. The grace and mercy of Jesus Christ that he gave to us. That Jesus came and fulfilled all of the law that we will not fulfill. That Jesus came and gave up his body and shed his blood, died upon the cross to forgive us of our sins. And rose to life again to say to us and that sinful human nature that when we were baptized, we were baptized into Jesus' death. So that in his resurrection, we too rise to a newness of life. We have this new life, the, the life that was given by Christ in His resurrection. When, we, when He died and was buried, those sins died and were buried with Him. And when He rose, they didn't come back to life, only He did. So let us abandon the sins and focus on the grace of Jesus Christ. But then it brings back again the question, why do we shrink away why do we still live in darkness? Why do we allow the world to do what is done, done without at least a word? I bring out for us to ponder the most recent ruling by the Supreme Court as it struck down two parts of Texas's rule against abortion. As it struck down the fact that if you are going to do abortions, you must be equipped like a regular surgical unit is. And if you are going to do abortions, then you have to have privileges at a local hospital just in case something goes wrong. You can admit your patient to the hospital. Supreme Court knocked both of those out. Why? Because they thought it impeded the, the freedom for a woman to have an abortion. It was too limited. Why don't we speak out? Why don't we share our, our angst and our gospel? The day after it ruling came down, uh, President uh, Harrison, Matthew Harrison of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod, sent out to the called workers this statement. The United States Supreme Court ruled today that 58 million aborted babies is not enough. Our national sin of abortion now dwarfs the atrocities of the genocide of 6 million Jews by the Nazis and the extermination of 20 million Christians by the Soviet Union. I can find no other words that describe this disgrace than those of, Her of Herman Sasse directed at the Nazi regime. And he goes and quotes a theologian in the Lutheran Church in the 1930s. Why are we silent while sin goes on? Why do we not speak out? help us to speak out. We need to have one thing, one thing in our lives. And that is to be filled by the Word. When we are filled by the Word of God, filled by the Word of God who made His flesh, and made flesh and made His dwelling among us, filled by the Word of God that He inspired to have written and was written about. When we are filled by the Word of God, something wonderful happens. Grace happens. When we are filled by the word, mercy and the grace of God, God gives to us the power to stand up and to stand out, to share our angst and our sorrows over the sins of the world, and to share the solution to that sin. To share that Jesus Christ came into the world to forgive sin, to forgive sinners like us. 
Jesus came into the world. Jesus came to give life. The Word of God became a human being so that we are forgiven. That we have a new life to live. A new life that lives in the grace and the mercy and the gospel of Jesus Christ. That lives in the light of His mercy and grace. So be filled with the Word. Say to your sin, no. I am not cowering. I am not cringing. I am not recoiling into the darkness because I'm getting my sins pointed out. No, I'm accepting them. Accepting of my sins and my sinfulness. Recognizing the sins of the world. And living in the grace that Jesus came. The light and the life that He gave. Both law and gospel. Be filled by the Word. Or in other words, believe. Believe. Simply put, believe in Jesus, my brother. Believe in Jesus, my brother, the one who came into my life. Believe in Jesus, who saved me from my sins. Believe in Jesus, who gave me his life. Simply put, just believe. Believe in what he's done. Believe in what he's doing. And believe in what he's done so that each person who believes in him will have life today, life forever, and life <coughs> in his presence. Believe. So what does that faith look like? What does that belief look like? <laughs> Faith looks like, simply put, as we talked about three weeks ago, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. Love the Lord your God. Have all the gods before Him. Honor His name. Honor His Sabbath. And the first second is just like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. Honor your father and mother. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not cover your neighbor's house. Do not cover your neighbor's mansion or maids or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. You want to know how what faith in Christ looks like? That's what it looks like. Love the Lord your God. And when we love the Lord your God, two things happen. We live the life knowing that we are sinners and we point out sin. And we live by means of the grace of Jesus Christ, His light, His life, the Word made flesh, and made His love among us. We live by His love and mercy and grace. Simply put, Believe. Believe in what Jesus Christ has done for you. My God. I see. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. And all God's children say.